Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you from your past reality. We are in chapter 5 of The Believer's Secret of the Abiding Presence. And today we're going to talk about in our devotional, Christ Crucified. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Galatians 6, 14. Christ's highest glory is his cross. On the cross, he glorified his Father, and the Father glorified him. The Lamb slain in the midst of the throne, described in the fifth chapter of Revelation, receives the worship of the ransomed, the angels, and all of creation. As a crucified one, his servants learn to say, May I never boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Christ's highest glory should be our only glory too. When the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, And surely I will be with you always, it was as the crucified one that he gave them the promise, even as he showed them the cruel marks on his hands and his feet. Each one who seeks to claim the promise must realize it is the crucified Jesus who promises, who offers to be with me every day. Is this one reason we find it so difficult to expect and enjoy the abiding presence of Jesus Christ? Do we refuse to glory in the cross by which we are to be crucified to the world. We have been crucified with Christ. Our old self was crucified with Him. You belong. You who belong to Christ, Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with His passions and desires. And yet, how little we have learned that the world has been crucified to us and that we are free from its power. As those who are crucified with Christ, how little we have learned to deny ourselves, to have the mind that was in Christ when he emptied himself and took the form of a servant and humbled himself and became obedient even to the death on the cross. Oh, let us learn this lesson. The crucified Christ is the one who comes to walk with us every day and in whose power we too are to live the life that can say, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The practice of the presence of God. Know by the light of faith that God is present and be content with directing all your actions toward Him. Do all what a desire to please Him. Do all what a desire to please Him. Irrespective of the consequences. Useless thoughts spoil everything, and all mischiefs begins with useless thoughts. Reject them as soon as you perceive their presence in your mind and return to communion with God. In the beginning, you may spend your appointed time of prayer simply rejecting wandering thoughts and then failing back into thinking them. Some devotional methods may not work for you, but eventually you will develop a sweet time of fellowship with God. The shortest way to go to God is not by mortifications of your body or other similar exercises that physically or mentally abuses your body or mind. Go straight to Him 
by a continual exercise of love and faith and doing all things for his sake. Distinguish between an act of understanding and an act of the will. An act of understanding is of very little value, but an act of the will is of utmost importance. Your supreme action must be loving and delighting yourself in God. Come with me in my prayer time. Dear Jesus, because I have been reading your word and because I have been studying the books of great Christian thinkers and leaders, my understanding of you and your will is growing by leaps and bounds. Keep me from mere intellectualism or a love of knowledge that never results in the moral transformation of my life. I seek true wisdom, which comes from the learned expressions and experience of practicing the truth. Show me how the very truth you have revealed to me can be practiced. Or show me the practical value of every Christian truth and that I know. That is a beauty and truth that I could contemplate all day. But I seek to move beyond the contemplation of truth to the willing and doing of truth. I pray that your Holy Spirit would warn me of any dangers in my thought life. And I pray that your Spirit would motivate me and empower me to the truth. May I truly live for you as you fulfill your purposes in my life. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. which was promised by God and is given. He dwells in us. Ask Him to lead your life. Talk to Him in truth. Don't run around in circles to get to your point. Because he already knows you. Read Psalm 139 and you will see how God knowing you knows you and how deep he knows everything. Wherever you go, when you're up, down, left, right, he knows everything. And not as a dictator but as a loving Father. Ask the Holy Spirit that indeed He warns you for thoughts that is not according to the fellowship with your God. And let Him reveal in your life what needs to be transformed, changed, that our character become a Christian character according to the life of Christ. And Christ went through a lot to give you a new life. A Christian life, you can experience a lot, as well as suffering, as well as pain, as well as good times, joyful times. In this humanity, living in this world, yes, we go through trials. But in all that, There is your God. Worship Him. Give Him everything. Everything. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. God's omnipotent. God's omnipresence. Bye.